Hey guys, it's Tiny Tom Logan back with another video for you. Today, we're going to be talking about all these rumours and humdrum and stuff that's going around in the industry at the moment. Pretty much everyone's picked up on the fact that now it seems to be that you can overclock the non-K series uh, Intel chips, Skylake chips. Now, the uh, K series ones are the ones that Intel let you overclock. They've got an unlocked multiplier and you can also play with the base clock as well. And that's something that's came back with Skylake. With the previous generations, the base clock was pretty much locked down and you could only get a little bit out of it. But in my testing, when I did the original um, Skylake overclocking review, when I did the 6600K and the 6700K, I got my 6600K to 280 base clock and the i7 6700K up to 350 base clock. Now that did mean that even with sensible volts you could get 200 times 20 like the old days for a 4 gigahertz overclock with less than what Intel are suggesting are stock volts. So that's just a little bit of baseline. Now there's been BIOSes floating around uh, saying that you can the, the BIOSes have now unlocked the overclocking on the non-K series. Now what this unlocking does is let you play with the, the base clock side of things. The multiplier is still pretty much fixed. You can run them back, but you can't run them up. Now, there with the, uh, the Asus, where there are some non-official Asus BIOSes going around at the moment, uh, and they're available at this present moment in time when I make the video for the Z170E. I will put it up on the screen for you. The Z170E, the Z170A, the Z170 Deluxe. The when you go into the Maximus, you've got the Impact Hero Gene. Uh, Extreme and the Ranger and then the Z170 Pro Gaming. So a pretty wide um, uh, selection of boards there. Now I've got the Z170A and that's what I've test all of my CPUs on because I like to keep things uh, fair, especially when you're talking about benchmarks and stuff, it saves confusion. So I busted the uh, Z170A out of the uh, Loft of Dreams brought it back downstairs. Now, uh, previously I had a six, uh, an i3-6320 anyway, but I managed to borrow an i5-6500 as well. Now the i3-6320 uh, starts life with no turbo and just a base clock of 3.9 gigahertz. And the i5-6500 has a base of 3.2 gigahertz and then a turbo of 3.6. Now with these non-official Asus uh, BIOSes, that are going around. There are a few um, uh, little things that you need to be aware of. And these are the known uh, issues at the moment, but we don't know whether these are gonna get fixed, whether Asus will get some official um, uh, dry uh, uh, BIOSes with some you know, proper engineers that have been worked on. But at the moment, there's no iGPU, no dynamic change of CPU frequency. That's like your speed step and your C states. So you would, uh, that's what makes your CPU speeds drop. Uh, so it's a pretty, it's a fixed speed, and they they even ask us to um, uh, go in and uh, manually set certain things as well to make sure that you get the right speeds running when you boot into Windows. But no C states, no turbo mode, and the turbo mode affects the i5. So rather than it going from 3.2 up to 3.6 with the multiplier switch, it's stuck at 3.2. So a 32 multiplier. That's also something to consider when we talk a little bit more later on. Uh, no CPU temperature reading is incorrect. I didn't get any CPU temperatures whatsoever. It just wasn't there. AVX instructions are very low uh, performance. And Windows XP ACPI is not supported at all. Now, uh, with my testing, I did think personally, I mean, I've done a lot of uh, review testing over the years where I'm getting stuff like weeks before NDAs. And these BIOSes really do feel... Uh, um, um, immature is probably the best way I can put it without it sounding condescending it's uh, they do just feel very new like they just need some polish uh, and some of my scores kind of uh, back that up anyway but the most important thing which is probably why you've tuned in is just shut up Tom tell us how they overclock so first of all the i3 I got up to 116 base clock at that 39 multiplier, I found that was the best way to get a decent clock. And then we got that up to uh, 4.5 gigahertz. It was 4520.8 at 1.36 volts. Um, so 
Four, we've gone from uh, 3.9 up to just over 4.5. I kept some memory in tow with that as well. I had some 2800 megahertz memory. And we, let the, we were playing with dividers and stuff and it seemed perfectly comfortable with all of that as well. With the i5, as I said to you before, we were limited uh, with the uh, reach that we could get on the i5 because we were stuck at a 32 multiplier. We couldn't get that turbo multiplier. If we could have done, we probably we might have been able to have pushed it further. But with the i5, 144 times 32 gave us 4.6 gigahertz. Um, now, just so I, I, I remember, they did ask us uh, to turn the boot performance mode to turbo performance, and then we needed to disable uh, speed step and C states in the BIOS to make sure that if you were to boot at stock, you were going to be at your maximum frequency. It, it gets a bit glitchy if you forget to do those things. Um, so that's just the bits and bobs that we did need to talk about. Now the, the actual uh, CPU performance, as you can see there, uh, with the uh, base clock, I did try dropping the multipliers right down to turn the uh, base clock up that little bit further, and I didn't find that that uh, really um, uh, did us too many favours. Uh, I, I got the feeling from the testing that I got that we were hitting uh, base clock limitations with these processors rather than kind of setting configuration issues. Now, it's always going to be a silicon lottery. Yours may be very different. The i5 that I've got is an engineering sample. The i3 that I've got is a retail sample that I actually purchased myself. Um, it was part of the times when I was trying to decide uh, which CPU that I wanted to use in my uh, WTF server. So we've got those. So uh, those hints for me that uh, they are limited on base clock, uh, that would make me think that they are speed binned. So uh, it would make sense. Intel only make really one um, uh, bit of silicon and everything gets speed binned out from that point depending on the performance. Now that would make a lot of sense really. The i5, you were looking at uh, four cores, no hyper threading. The i3 was two cores with hyper threading. We've already shown uh, in previous reviews that we've done that the, uh, the i3 was actually pretty good for gaming. Uh, but when we started testing, uh, these we were finding that some of the scores were actually starting to go uh, down now that wasn't because uh, of a bad overclock we were actually getting a negative you know slightly worse scores at stock but before you panic again we've got a, a, a big uh, hint gut feeling however you want to put it that this is just a BIOS issue normally what I would have done is pop the Z170A out chucked a different board in and then gone to C but times is short to try and get the, the, the video out. Uh, and also, you know, it's coming up to Christmas. I wanted to uh, bang something on the channel for you to actually see my face and see that I'm still alive. Um, so essentially my feelings with this are, this is gonna be a, a, a great for playing. It's an enthusiast thing, really. Uh, normal end users aren't really gonna give a monkeys about this. They're gonna fit their gear and forget about it. For those of you out there that are interested, uh, you can hit the link, go through to the review on the Overclock 3D website where I've put the links to all of these BIOSes. So you can download these on the Overclock 3D website or the OC 3D website. I need to stop saying Overclock 3D because it's just OC 3D now, it's coming. Um, so uh, you can go and download the BIOSes for you there. Give you something to play with over Christmas. Have a fiddle. Don't fret if you don't think that you're getting massive performance uh, increases or anything like that. Just flip um, a normal BIOS back on and you'll be absolutely fine. I think this is a very, very new thing. I think it's uh, the rumours have started to go out in the industry that this is possible and uh, people have just been uh, unlocking certain bits in the BIOS. I think if Asus really uh, get allowed, and it really does come down to that at the moment, because from the conversations that I've been having with people in the industry, they actually are not 100% sure whether Intel are going to let this come out. I personally think this is a brilliant brilliant thing and it allows people to go out and you know buy slightly cheaper CPUs and, and play around with them. Uh, Intel shouldn't particularly worry because from like I said with my testing the fact that the base clock is much lower and that uh, you've not got the multipliers that you can play with it kind of safeguards those K-series CPUs for people that really do want to ramp uh, their gear right up. Um, especially with the fact that you can do a lot more with the, the base clock on the K-series that I've played with, and you still do get that multiplier option as well. If we had an i3 that was doing 200 base clock, uh, and we could turn it down to like 20, and then open it up that way, this would be a totally different thing, but from what we've done so far, it's not. 
So I, I, I personally think that Intel should let this slide and then also if they do, that then means that Asus can chuck some um, uh, um, engineer time, BIOS engineer time at this, get these BIOSes um, uh, official uh, and then that will make a massive difference. Uh, so for the moment I would say go have a play, see how you get. I think I've got um, uh, some little issues with the Z170A but that might be different if you own the Ranger or the Z170 Deluxe or the impact for example so if you've got a non k series cpu then uh, have a play if you do have a play then let us know on the oc 3d forums one thing i will say is uh, I, we've been getting some messages lately that uh, some of the um, authentication emails uh, are not getting through from our forums to you guys so if you don't get one it's probably you, it's either in your spam box or your email provider is just for some whatever strange reason at the moment blocking it. We are working on trying to find out a fix, we'll sort it out. But if you don't get the authentication email, hit us up on Twitter or um, uh, post on one of the Facebook links or something like that and I can or the team can manually add you. So don't think it's us not sending you the emails or anything like that, it's just something to do with uh, your email 99.9999 times uh, out of a hundred it's just an email glitch so if you do want to join brilliant come and join us there's an, an amazing uh, group of people there but anyway the whole point in this is we can have a good old chinwag about how each processor is overclocking and then when new BIOSes and all that type of thing come out I'll try and get hold of them early and they will all be going on the forums as well so come join the community have a good old chat about that I would love to hear from you oh emails people want me uh, I would love to he hear from you to see how you get on with it I'd also like to hear your thoughts on uh, what we've got. And I've just remembered the whole time that we've been talking, I didn't even have the flipping rig on. But one thing I will say is thank you very much to Overclockers for my USB tree. Uh, it's uh, helped festivise, I think that's the word we're looking for anyway, uh, up the festivities in the office during uh, a rather busy period with stuff that's going on. I'm not going to chit and chat anymore. I'm going to do you a subscriber video today, I think, uh, and get that uploaded just after Christmas. But for now, at least, this is lots of love and hugs. Tiny Tom Logan, you wishing you all a very Merry Christmas and a prosperous New Year. Love to you all.